got shot, attacked, and ambushed. It was a miracle to be alive. A raider managed to cut my left eye. I couldn't keep living like this, but I had a plan. If I could get a boat, I could escape to an island, live away the rest of my days in peace. But first, I needed to heal, get supplies, and a boat. I buried the body of the attacker. It seemed to be another survivor. He left me no choice. I needed to fortify my shelter. I took care of the broken window. I started gathering wood, tree by tree, one after the other. Barricaded every single opening. No more surprises. No one was getting in. Even put up a table against the door. I couldn't take any chances. Next morning, I put up some sheets to block the line of sight. Had to gather supplies. On my way to town, I encountered a group of sets. The gunshot must have brought them here. Too close to home. Couldn't let them roam free like that. Cleared the road and arrived shortly after. I had a strange feeling since yesterday. The attack scarred me. Not just physically, it was more than that. The walkers were predictable, but a living person. Desperate people are capable of anything. That fear lingered in the back of my mind every second. First building a scavenge was some sort of market. Thankfully, found some food and medicine, checked an ambulance, grabbed everything of use. Any sudden noise made my heart drop. Funny, realizing it was just a walker was a relief. Just busy work, flow through the motions, nothing to worry about. I continued my search through different houses, moving silently room by room, on high alert, looking over my shoulder, ready to react. Outside, I checked every corner, surrounded by the sound of the wind. Proceeded to kill more walkers. Got a propane tank, could come in handy. Slowly but surely, I went on. Gas cans, seats, duck food, crackers, door after door. No shelf left unchecked, no room left unseen. I returned under the cover of the night. Was running out of storage, but things were looking much better. Or so I thought. I didn't take that shot. I hesitated, felt anger, frustration, but also pity. Should I end another life just for a vehicle? Who knows what that person went through? Who am I to judge who lives and who doesn't? Natural selection will take care of that. But I was no sitting duck. I wouldn't let myself get beaten to the ground. The path ahead was tough, but I was no stranger to misfortune, suffering, and sorrow. The end of the world taught me one thing. You are in control. Things will get bleak, but there's always something you can do about it. Even if it's waking up the next day, that's a step forward at day one. After all, you're the one who gives life a meaning. Be it feeling the warmth of the sun on your face in the morning, having a nice meal, laying on the grass, having a cold drink, reading a book, or fighting against the undead. From sunrise to nightfall, I cut down those trees, rising a fortress from the ground, carrying each single log, no matter the fatigue, I kept going. At long last, I finally finished the perimeter. I put up the doors and looked, contemplated. This was an important step, a statement. For myself, no matter how bleak the situation looks, you can make it better. I wasn't going down. With blood and sweat, creativity and thoughtfulness, I designed a rudimentary but effective system for the doors. With a single press of a button, I could open, close, unlock the gate as I wished. No one was getting in, but I was going out. I couldn't remain without a vehicle, especially with my broken leg. I needed to head out, search town, look for a new car. And so, I started walking, slowly limping through the grassland. I'll admit, I was afraid. I was more vulnerable than ever. With the recent attack, the car theft, anything could happen at any moment, from any angle, and I barely could walk properly. I realized I needed to avoid the road, stay away from open spaces if possible, remain close to the trees, but not too much. They were still wandering, waiting to jump when least expected. I kept moving, as swiftly as possible. With my bow and arrow, the sets didn't stand a chance. I was confident, but that didn't last. I swear, 
life has a dark sense of humor. Using my surroundings, cutting corners, sleeping within the narrow alleyways, vaulting again and again, sneaking through buildings, I managed to lose them. I was exhausted. I had no mobility, no way to defend myself from a distance, and probably there were people nearby. I pushed through the fatigue and kept on looking. I had to find a car. Peeking from behind every corner, I made sure the streets were clear. Disgusting. I still couldn't get used to that sight. I stayed away. Kept pushing. Checked a few vehicles. They were all destroyed. Unusable. The sun was going down and my heart was racing. I needed to get a functioning car quickly. Went southwest. And then, through the fences, I saw it. Maybe this was it. Placing clear. Almost clear. The truck was in a pretty rough condition, but I'd make it work. Fill the gas tank, got in, and hot wired it. I was so relieved. Felt my soul coming back to my body. Drove back home. I made it. I survived to live another day. driving away. If only I had taken that shot. This went too far. Couldn't keep going like this. One way or another, I had to put this to an end. I no longer recognize myself. Each time I took away a human life, it was like losing a part of me. I was supposed to save lives, not end them. But I guess the world has changed. Every man for himself, caring for one another, maybe that was a thing of the past. Couldn't trust anybody no longer. And so, I walked the final steps to a new life, licking my wounds. Destroying the old, welcoming the new, reaping what I saw, pondering. I no longer seek human contact. I dreaded it. Maybe there were good people out there, but in this new world, sooner or later, you become tainted. Person who you were before didn't matter. The truth is, no one was prepared for this. No one saw this coming. In extreme situations, your true self comes out. That's who you really are. In this twisted world, it was survival of the fittest. Maybe someone will prove me wrong. After all, hope is the last thing to die. But I was too tired to keep fighting. I needed a new place to live in peace. And I was going there.